So the top diagram is the result of, of that Monte Carlo simulation. I'll explain, or I'll try and explain quickly what a probability density function is. So if you take the 30,000 different estimates of reserves, the first thing you could do, and everyone probably in the room could do, is to say you'd, you'd record like a, a, a histogram. So how many times did 50 million barrels was the answer out of 30,000 different calculations? Maybe 50 times it was 50 million barrels. It was 60, 60 times it came out of 100 million barrels. So you, you would plot the frequency of each um, volume occurring. That's, that's a simple histogram. If you then converted the number of times it occurred into a percentage, that becomes a frequency plot. Okay, but that's still quite discrete. It's how, what we want is a continuous number. The height of, a, of all the bars in a frequency plot adds to one. You've normalized it all back to one. What we want is a, is a continuous distribution, so we, can, we actually normalize the area back to one. So the area under that curve represent, is, is, is represent 100%. And when, you've, when, you, when you normalize it to the area, it comes a probability density function. So reading that, it's telling me that the smallest volume of this field could possibly be is 20 million barrels. The highest it could ever be, the maximum, which you can hardly see, is 400 million barrels. The shape tells me about the relative probability of the different volumes occurring. So I clearly, the, the peak of that probability density function is telling me that the most frequently occurring, the, the, the modal value is about 70, 80 million barrels. Okay, so they're all quite useful numbers. Now I'm beginning to actually extract useful information from there. Now, as I said, because the area of that, under that curve is 100%, what I want to do is work out some confidence levels. So if I wanted to get a P90, I want a 90% confidence, what you start doing is, uh, is I'll integrate. So I'll start at 20 million barrels and I'll go through and integrate, take the area as I move along the x-axis. When I get to a certain point, where you can see where the hatching stops and it goes solid, 10% of the volume of the area of that chart lies below that line, 90% lies above it. So that's telling me that in that particular case, 90% of the outcomes were bigger than 50 million barrels and 10% were less. That's my 90% confidence level. I'm 90% confident that the answer would be bigger than 50. So I continue to integrate along the curve, and I can get to the point where the volume split equally in half, 50-50. That becomes my P50 value. And so that means I'm 50% of the confidence could be bigger, or 50% it can be smaller. It's the exact sort of um, halfway point. If I continue to integrate across the curve to the, to the other vertical line, that's telling me there that my P10 comes out 163.6. So that, that point there, only 10% of the values lie bigger than it, 90% of the answers lie lower than it. So that's how I would extract my P10 number. So when I report 1P, 2P, 3P, effectively I can directly get it out of this type of analysis. So you can see how it, it's useful in the background for us to determine, without any bias, the confidence levels. The bottom chart is, is effectively just the result of that integration. So we turn that integration and record the numbers in what's called a cumulative exceedance curve. So the axis there, the vertical axis, is, is, is probability from 100% at the top down to zero. You can see the curve starts coming down off, a, off, off the curve. It starts at 20 million barrels. Because at that point, I'd say I'm 100% confident that the volume has to be bigger than 20 million barrels, because that was the minimum I could calculate. So every answer is bigger than 20. You can see that along there, it can't be any bigger than 400, okay? The chance of it being 400 is extremely small. Look at the top chart, which gives you the idea of the relative probability of each outcome. You can hardly see the height of the bar at 400. Yes, it could happen. What's the chance of it happening? Extremely light. So if someone tells you I've got 400 million barrels in this field, well, yes, you could have, but I could win the lottery in the UK this weekend. I probably won't, okay? So, so you, you need to take these numbers in context. The P50 is probably the number, 2P is what, is what you're saying, well, I'm 50% chance of have that occurring. That's better odds, isn't it, than, than almost zero. So the cumulative curve at the bottom is a much more useful curve for us because I can then pick off and read it in any way I want. So I can actually say, well, what's the chance of me finding uh, 100 million barrels? You look at 100 million barrels, you go up to the, up to the curve, what's the probability of that occurring? 40%. So the 40% chances of getting 100 million barrels or more. So this is the sort of charts we generate internally. I'll say these generally don't get published, but these are how we 
how we, how we come up with a sort of an unbiased view of confidence levels. So that's, that's that. I say this is what we call unrisked. What I mean by that is this, this could apply to an oil and gas field, so we know it's there, all we've got is the uncertainty in the volume. Supposing we haven't discovered this field yet, okay? We've yet to drill it. We have to apply what's called the chance of discovery. And I say when you've got chance of discovery, it's got two outcomes, hasn't it? It could either be a success. If it's successful, the volume's between 20 and 400 million barrels. I don't know what it's going to be, but that's where it's going to lie. But it's more likely to be dry. If it's dry, what's the volume going to be? Zero, okay? If it's a dry hole, it can't have any oil and gas in it. So if I was to include, say, a chance of discovery, 